Hi, my name is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast of the New Testament. I'll be using as the text the King James Version, along with the Joseph Smith Translation. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll also be using quotes from general authorities of the Church, the Apostles and Prophets, and BYU professors and others, and uh, every word out of the Scriptures themselves. So if you're ready for a really detailed analysis of the New Testament, you've come to the right place. Welcome. Hi there, welcome back. This will be for Colossians chapter 2. The heading reads, Fullness of Godhead dwells in Christ. Beware of deceit by traditions of men. The handwriting against us was nailed to cross of Christ. All right, verse 1. For I would that ye know... I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, or anguish, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of Christ, who is of God, even the Father." in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have hither, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in me, rooted and built up in, me, in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. What he's telling him here is to study the scriptures. Don't let the philosophies of men lead you astray. Joseph B. Worthland said, Jesus Christ is infinitely more than a great teacher and philosopher. As part of the plan, Jesus offered to atone for the sins of all mankind and bear the suffering of those sins, satisfying the law of justice if the sinners repent. He also offered his mortal life, was crucified, and became the first to be resurrected, making possible the literal resurrection of all of our Father's children. He is our mediator with the Father and our exemplar in all things. His loving kindness doing or toward us is beyond our comprehension. Verse 9, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, in other words, Christ does not lack anything, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. In other words, Jesus' grace is sufficient. Christ can solve our problems much easier than we or the world can. Verse 11, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the, un, of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins, and the circumcision and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened, or caused to become alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect of any holy of, of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you, or your reward is in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which are not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Remember, I said in the beginning that uh, these people were worshiping angels. Anyway, that's what he's mentioning here. Verse 19, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands, having nourishment, ministered and knit together, increaseth in the, with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances, which are after the doctrines and commandments of men, who teach you to, to touch not, taste not, handle not, all those things which are to perish with the using, which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will, worship, and humility, and neglecting the body as to satisfying the flesh, not in, not in any honor to God." So uh, he's he's just saying here not to uh, trust in the flesh and in uh, things that we don't understand and and also uh, to trust in God and and His in the atonement of Jesus Christ. Anyway, that's the end of the chapter, and we'll see you next time. Bye.